William Hunt's several role sponsors the Trilby Tour. The Perfect Gentleman's Playground Welcome to event number three on this year's tour. I thought it was a good time to break out the gazelle. This week we're at the majestic Old Thorns Manor Hotel Golf and Country Estate for the Trilby Tour Championship of Hampshire. The Trilby Tour is well and truly flying into 2012 and last week more history was made as Paul Rocky Llewellyn entered the record books when, like James Boast, he retained his regional title, claiming a second Oxfordshire crown. And that brings us to this week's venue as we head south to Liphook and return for a second year to the stunning Old Thorns Manor Hotel Golf and Country Estate for the Trilby Tour Championship of Hampshire. In 2011, the title was claimed by a very popular Trilby Torian, Duncan Sealing. The former head greenkeeper at the Buckinghamshire brought it home in modestly understated style. Don't be fooled by the quiet exterior though, you don't win on this tour if you haven't got a tiger in the tank. And Duncan is back at Old Thorns this week for a shot at a second title as we head into another week of Trilby drama right here on Sky Sports. Coming up on this week's show, we hear from the two men that brought the Trilby Tour back to Old Thorns for a second year, Henry Alice and Greg Knights. The Trilby is a unique tournament that I don't think there's any other amateur golfing event quite like it. I think they've captured the, the essence of the pro game and, and put that into amateur golf. We're very proud to be associated with it and we, you know, we think both you know, the Trilby Tour and Old Thorns complement each other very well. Feathers fly out on the course as William gives one caddy the right to reply. Really, he was poor, really poor today. Really, he really actually poor. said he played quite well. Did he? In the midst of a sweltering heat wave, we'll find out who was hot and who was not in the battle for top ten and a ticket to the Trilby Tour World Final at Stoke Park. The Hampshire title is on the line and we'll bring you highlights action from the four-man three-hole winner-takes-all playoff here at Old Thorns. And we'll have our weekly visit to the Trilby Tour Rogues Gallery. We'll be in the pink as the players go in the drink. We'll stop laughing when you guys stop playing the silly shots. Let's be honest, though, never going to happen. Now this group, John Travers, Alex Whittle and James Lees out at 7.30 this morning. And I think they'll be grateful for that, Matt. Yeah, weather forecast for today is going to get very hot as the day goes on. I expect the golf to get even hotter. Great looking swing here. One of our playoff holes later in the day. The voice of Matt Woods, our Trilby Tour golf expert alongside me in the commentary box. And it looks like we've got a long driving contest straight away. Yeah, Lease won't want to be left behind here. Slightly down the left side would be the ideal line. It'll just feed back to the right. And that looks like that's exactly what he's done. That'll do very nicely indeed. Now, William is down on the first tee. Fourth time tryst. Give us a little run through on your other efforts. Uh, first year at the Buckinghamshire qualified, came about I think 15th or 20th in the final. Next year didn't do so good, pressure got to me. Last year here qualified, missed the playoff by one. Bad wage into the glass green but uh, really enjoyed it and felt really good and it was great to be here again. So the playoffs, is that your aim today? Yeah, that's my aim today. So top four, Step you fancy it? Well yeah, I have to say that, yeah. 
<laughs> <laughs> what is it that keeps you coming back? I think it's just for the, the normal person that makes them feel special for a day. Like, and, all right, you know, I played in a lot of, this was say, this is my fourth, but you know, you still get the same nerves and everything. Like, and I've seen guys here last year, a guy, he could hardly hit the ball. Like, and it's, you know, and they're, they're decent golfers as well, but as soon as you put that Tilby hat on, gone. Got to focus. Good to see Michael back in action today, and uh, he's a good player, you know. Now, a bit of imagination here from Peter Skidmore at 12, Matt. You've got to go under the trees and through the long grass. He's used the long grass to check the ball up beautifully. I'd like to see him do that again. Now up to the 16th, par 3, measuring 160 yards. Feature of the greens here, a lot of tiers and slopes. You're going to see this one up the tier. Pace is the all-important bit. Just a little heavy-handed, so some work to be done for his three. Yeah, a touch heavy from Alex Whittle, but going very well with Lees and Travers in one of those early groups. Now, I think Swan going the other side of the tree, but he fancies a bit of the same as his playing partner Skidmore. Oh, and used the path beautifully. Got that aggressive kick, and then it bounced twice in the rough this time to kill it. So there's some exhibition golf going on back at the 12th. Now Lease out at 16, this is a par putt, 31 points already. And putting himself in a commanding position, definitely going to guarantee himself a top 10 spot. And probably looking for the clubhouse lead. Yeah, scoring's not been phenomenal today, this course is very, very tricky. And putts like that and the one we saw from Lease are like gold dust. I just wonder what the total is going to be today to make top 10 and also make the top four winner-takes-all playoff. McCormick here at nine, 15 points already, looking good. Another one of these two-tier greens. Pace, the all-important part. Greens running today at a good pace. Players have got to be careful that putts don't get away from them. Great work there. Well, that's very nice from one of the Trilby Tour regulars. What do you think today, Matt, to get into top 10? Could be as low as 30 points today. Unusual on the Trilby Tour. And as you said, course playing tricky. Tree lined. Don't have to be far off line here to get yourself in trouble. Skidmore, after that fantastic approach under the trees, the putt far too easy. 28 points, not enough. Joe Swan alongside Skidmore. Two points better off. And 30 points certainly was in with a sniff. But in the end, it proved to be below the mark. Back to the nine where McCormick's tidying up for his par. And would go on to score 34 points and take the early clubhouse lead. Yeah, good front nine, good back nine. Michael McCormick in business. And William is at the first tee with another familiar Trilby Tour face. Third time tryist. Do we fancy it today? Uh, I'm pretty confident actually. Uh, had a round yesterday. Know where the things are, so should be good. Third time the charm. <laughs> and what are we going for? Top 10 or top 4? Uh, well, top 10 will be good. Top 4 is a bonus. What's been your best finish so far? Uh, first time I've played at uh, Sprouton Manor, I did final. So that was, that's what I'm trying to uh, do again this year. Yeah. And what's the, uh, what's the game plan today? Game plan? Hit and hope. <laughs> that ever so common game plan. So that means the eyes will be shut here. Getting back up the tier, looking a little bit pacey this. Oh. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, lucky the pin was in, otherwise that might have been in Sussex. Brilliant effort from King Hui, but in the end, not good enough. 28 points, doesn't qualify. Something tells me expect to see him back for a fourth try next year. Now out to 17, Lease. Oh, only went in because of a knee bend there. Great birdie though. And in the end, that was enough for a terrific score. So James Lees, the six handicapper, takes over from Michael McCormick as the clubhouse leader on 38 points. And a very good group, this. Whittle just knocking it in, finishing with 32. That might be on the bubble come the end of the day. And Travis tidying up here on 17 as well. Would go on to score 31 points and looking very congested today for that top four. Scoring slightly lower on the top 10 than we're used to. But yeah, Travers with a really good chance of going to the world final at Stoke Park. Now, Keith Webb, a man that's already been to Stoke Park this year to claim the golden ticket on the Trilby Tour. Chose any course he wanted to play at 
and he decided on old thorns, as did this man. Matt, so did we fancy ourselves today? Um, I would have done, but I tweaked me back a bit yesterday, so I'm a bit apprehensive, but uh, beware the injured golfer is the saying, isn't it? It is, because sometimes you can play a bit better with a nice slow swing because you're protecting the back. But that, that's what I'm hoping for, mate, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, so you fancy a top ten finish today, or, or, well, or do you go all the way? That's but... the aim, well, like, everyone wants to win, don't they? I mean, we don't come here just for the hell of it. We're competitive, we want to do well. I'm playing off force, you only lose one shot. Yeah, that's a bit of a bonus, yeah, I forgot it was three quarters. I was quite pleased with that when we got here. It seems to be the better players of round four handicap do well in this, so all eyes will be on you. Don't put any pressure on me, really. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no pressure on you today, Matt. I mean, nobody will be watching you play today. I can tell. I can no, absolutely you. not. This isn't this isn't really my neck of the woods. This is uh, this is the other the other side of Hampshire for me. So uh, bit out my bit out my comfort zone. Matt, I'll meet you on the 18th. Look forward to it, mate. Some interesting leg action there from the former Saints and England footballer. But a great result. And Back of the net on the opening hole for Letizia. Well, look, if I'm going to hit him that well, would you mind following me round for the next four hours? <laughs> Thank you very much. Before we do follow the players round, there's just time to hear more about this venue and its fine golfing pedigree from Greg Knights and first of all, Henry Alice. Old Thorns has got a, a, a really quite interesting history. That um, It was designed by my father, Peter Alice, and he had it officially opened by Jack Nicholas, Seve Ballesteros, Isaiah Aoki and Bill Rogers, who was the current Open champion. Uh, they came down and played a competitive four ball and uh, they had a, a prize fund of 100,000 uh, at the time, which was a, a considerable sum of money. Uh, Ayuki won with a 69 uh, from the White Pegs, where they, the Trouble Tour players have been playing from today. We've still got all the scorecards and the memorabilia from those rounds, which, which can be found in the sports bar. Um, and it's just, it's lovely to have and continue the tradition of having golfing events here. Uh, and it's great to have the Trophy Tour coming and, and continuing that tradition. Old Thorns has built on that fabulous history, the new leisure facility being the latest addition. Last year it showcased the course extremely well. Um, we've been under development for the past five years and we're now coming to the, the, the finishing stages of that and we, I think we've really built up into a fantastic complex and we're ready to show you know, the rest of the UK you know, what we've got to offer and uh, how far we've moved on. The Trophy Tour has, you know, has really built up over the past you know, four or five years and is now the most prestigious amateur event in, uh, in the country. It completely tears you to pieces. It's, you know, your, your normal game is, is, is gone. I mean, I've, I've competed twice, failed miserably every time. Um, even if your game is completely on weeks before, you're feeling really good on the day and to, to watch all these people who think they're going to come into this and just it like any other game of golf, it, it's not. It's you know, it's a Chilby tour. It's something special. And it's brilliant to watch. You know, watch people out of their comfort zone. It's brilliant. The course is is not very long, but it's very tight, and there's a lot of water, and there's a lot of trees. So if you can't hit the fade or the draw, then you're stuck with just hitting a straight shot, and you're probably going to have to club down rather than be a bit more aggressive and go around the corners. So definitely, the ability to shape the ball will be hugely beneficial to the players today. My favourite hole is, is definitely the, the fifth here. Uh, that's our signature hole that everyone knows when they come to Old Thorns, that's what they want to come and play. From the high tee, it's an amazing view from up there. You have a, a tunnel downhill, um, tree lined with pines. Very small green, uh, round green at the bottom with a big pond on the left. Uh, possible to drive from the tee, so a short par four. Again, another risk and reward hole. Um, you get it wrong and you're racking up a seven, eight, nine. You get it right, you're coming off with a two. So, a great hole. So James Lees is top of the leaderboard at the moment, but will he stay there? More golf action to come here on Sky Sports right after the break. The perfect gentleman's playground. William Hunt Savile Row sponsors the Trilby Tour. Welcome back to a scorching day at Old Thorns Manor Hotel Golf and Country Estate for the Trilby Tour Championship of Hampshire. William is down at the first tee. How do we hope to do today? A lot better than last year. Come up here the year before, had a practice round, great score, thought was going to waltz it. Come out on the first day, first tee, looked at the camera, looked down at my hands and they were shaking. <laughs> <laughs> that was it and that was all she wrote. I had a complete nightmare, but it was such a great experience. If it's the nearest anybody's ever going to get to playing a proper professional tournament, the way the course is set up, it's done so professionally. The greens are like lightning. 
and on top of all that you've got the cameras in your face and uh, I'll tell anybody to come out here fancies look at it on the telly it looks so easy it really, you think God oh, I could have made that you get in front of the cameras and it's a totally different story Michael you're back I am back and this time I mean to win it I mean it to win it I love all the clobber I love the gear I love looking good I love going on the website, I've made friends with so many people. Interestingly, I was sitting in the bar yesterday evening, having a quiet pint, a guy came up to me, you must be Michael Thane, I recognise your photo, and we've been chatting on the website. He went off about an hour ago, looked pretty nervous, but it's his first time, but hey, you know, he'll, he'll get by. Um, I just absolutely love it, it's a great day out for amateurs. I think you have to look at the uh, latest edition of the Golf International magazine. For an amateur player to be on the front cover of an international golf magazine, I mean, it's every amateur's dream. This is the World Cup of amateur golf. For me, this is the one thing that I look forward to all year. Um, it's one thing me and my coach work towards. It's better than any other tour out there for the amateur. You play with a couple of rookies today. Okay. So are you going to help them? Are you going to give them advice or are you just going to stay in the zone? I'm not going to give them the first tee tip, which for me is just forget everything's there <laughs> and just look at the ball, nothing else. <laughs> I mean, the first time I did it, I duffed, duffed my tee shot. I remember it well. Uh, duck. <laughs> so I'm not going to give the advice there, but going around, it'll just be just, just keep your eye on the ball and just relax. And do we fancy it today? Definitely. Had a good round Saturday. Everything seems to be coming together now, and um, hopefully I'll do well. So, champ, how does it feel to be defending today? A bit nervous. Uh, enjoyed a good year of being the, being the reigning champ, but yeah, a bit nervous. Want to do well. People recognise you in the street, stopped you in the supermarkets? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. We've had a few instances where people have just come up and said, oh, I see you on the telly last night and things like that. So, yeah, it has been strange, but good fun. Good fun. The course has come on fantastic since we were here last year. I mean, you'll know yourself as, as, a, as a head greenkeeper, yeah. but it looks like it's matured about 10 years in one year. Yeah, no, it looks fantastic. Just from what I can see here, the uh, condition of the course is, uh, is awesome. And uh, just from on the pattern green there, the greens are... They're a lot quicker than last year and look in good condition, so yeah, it should be, should be fun. <laughs> Duncan, enjoy. Thank you. Cheers. Duncan Sealing, a very good champion, but what a difference a year makes. The first hole was good and the 18th was vintage Sealing when he stiffed this amazing approach. But the holes in between were not stamped with Duncan's usual consistency. And despite his best efforts to rescue a tricky situation, he knew that even if he made this last putt, things were not looking good for the soon-to-be former champion. 28 points was short of the mark, the title was relinquished and a ticket to Stoke Park went up in smoke. A contributing factor to the champion's demise might have been his brother-in-law Callum Old, who caddied for Duncan in 2011 but decided to have a go himself in 2012. Et tu Brutus? There was no qualification to Stoke Park for Michael Thane either, who had his golf pro nephew Joshua on the bag, but he only managed to guide Uncle Michael to 22 points. That won't stop Mr Thane though, one of the most popular characters on the tour will be back for another pop for sure in 2013, and we wish him luck. Ashley Alinea was once again at his combative best out on the course, but like so many Trilby Torians here at Old Thorns, he just couldn't get it rolling into the 30s. It was goodbye Ashley for another year. And what about our old mate Glyn Tomlinson? In Rogue's Gallery last year when he knocked his hat off on the first tee and determined to get in again in 2012, despite his lowly score, playing a game he invented all by himself, called Hit the Host. And much to everyone's relief, he couldn't play that game properly either. Talking of which, Trubby Tour debutant Ed Bliss was too emotionally fragile to speak to William immediately after his monumental round, but he did have time to blame his caddy in passing. And you know William, he couldn't resist a chat with the newly sacked bagman. Ed wasn't very complimentary about your skills today, Reese. Do you want to sort of counter that? Well, I was embarrassed the whole way I went round, really. Um, he put a shame to my caddy and skills, and his performance put me off. So uh, that was to do with... Really, he was poor, really poor today. Really, he actually really said he played quite well. Did he? He said he struck it well, his, his swing was smooth, he said, and his caddy was just really not on, the, on yeah. his game. Well, um, let's put it this way, he, he got 23 balls he brought with him today, and just to state, he was that busy, that he actually went out and got his name writ on his balls. So when you're, when you're looking around, there's 22 balls out there with Ed Bliss on them. Sums it up, really, I think. Thanks for that. It's so good to get the caddies insight to what's really going on out there. Just your typical caddy there. We played great, you played shocking. No, they sell a picture tells a thousand words. It certainly does in this case. Chisholm going along very nicely on the front nine. 
11 points through the first six holes. Here on the par 3 seventh. Bit of work to be done. But heading in the right direction. Beautiful bit of touch there. Yeah, nice smile from the caddy. We're playing great, boss. Yeah, that's how it should work. Now, Aitken for par at nine. And he continued with the solid golf like that all the way through to record a final total of 32. And I think you're right, Matt. I think the shootout is going to be for the top four. And top 10 cutoff is going to be uh, at 31. Now, will this man get inside it? Haig going well through 15 holes. And a man with local knowledge. Yeah, great par three, this. Green, you can't really afford to miss either side. Does feed in a little off that right-hand side. Oh, but not enough. And that's left him a very tricky up and down. Greg Britton. Birdie chance at nine. Playing alongside Tom Muldoon, the man in the front of that shot to the left. And Tom going for yet another qualification to a Trilby Tour World Final. Now Haig will be drawing on all his experience as an Old Thorns member, trying to save par here on 16, and that's going to get away from him. Green's lightning fast today. Britain then. To close out this front nine. Definitely the most amount of points we've seen through nine holes today. Well, that's a super start, but unfortunately, he couldn't quite keep it going, the five handicapper. It was good enough, 31 points to qualify for Stoke Park. But unfortunately for him, not in the top four, which is where he should have been. Now, Haig needs this one, but he shoved it wide. Well, interesting stuff for Nick Haig, and he's got a score on 17 and 18 if he wants to get into that top four. Now, talking of scoring, let's get back and see how Mr Letizia did. Absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, I've loved it and uh, I, I shall be back next year, um, hopefully <laughs> with a decent swing uh, and try and challenge it a little bit higher up the leaderboard. But for anybody who hasn't tried it, um, superb experience for an amateur golfer. The first tee shot was probably the best one I hit all day. <laughs> so that was quite good. And then uh, I thinned a four iron to about eight feet on the bar three. So uh, I got lucky in front of the cameras and that was about it. The course is stunning. When you get up on that fifth tee, I think it is, and uh, you, ca you can't help but be uh, taken in by the views. Absolutely superb. And people who, who haven't played this golf course, um, just for those views alone, let alone the, the difficult uh, course that they've got here, definitely worth coming. Legends have been created on the Trilby Tour over the years, and champion of Ireland Tom Muldoon is right up there as the most consistently successful player in Trilby history, nailing that part for 31 points and his third straight world final qualification. Also heading to Stoke Park and potentially the winner-takes-all top four playoff here at Old Thorns was Richard Chisholm, whose short game kept him in the running with 32 points. With scoring being so low, there was still plenty of room to squeeze onto the leaderboard. In the end, nobody could match that fantastic 38 points by James Lees, but Adrian Pearce was the last man in at 31. Cruelly bumping four men on 30 off the board with virtually the last shot of the day. Was he bothered? What do you think? That meant his spot in the playoffs was still up for grabs, and Old Thorns member Nick Haig grabbed it with both hands. 34 points to put him top four, bump the 31s out of the shootout and force the 32s to hit one more shot for the remaining place in the playoff. Here we go again. Peter Aitken, Alex Whittle and Richard Chisholm from the Trilby Tour tee nearest the pin for a shot at glory. Chisholm didn't fancy his, but wouldn't you know it, he crept on and crept in. Alex Whittle with a very sporting gesture in defeat and Chisholm on the right ecstatic at the prospect of yet more Trilby Tour terror. Thanks a lot, William. And so to the final leaderboard, P.S. Muldoon, Britton and Travers join the shootout losers Aitken and Whittle at Stoke Park for the Trilby Tour World Championship final, while Richard Chisholm, Michael McCormick, Nick Haig and top scorer on the day James Lees gird their loins and head into the winner-takes-all showdown. Four playoff newbies go into battle right after the break here on Sky Sports. Perfect Gentleman's Playground. William Hunt Savile Row sponsors the Trilby Tour.
Welcome back. Every week we like to show the calm before the playoff storm. What a day it's been so far at Old Thorns. And now it's time to sort out the man from the boys in our three-hole winner-takes-all playoff for the Trilby Tour Championship of Hampshire. James Lees, Michael McCormick, Nick Haig and Richard Chisholm, four playoff newbies on the first tee, all clearly feeling the pressure of the moment. And the clue that gives that away is that three of them seem to have forgotten who they are. There we go, gents. Fasten your seatbelts. It's playoff time. First up, it's El Supremo, the boss in regulation, James Lees, who played some fantastic golf out on the course today and needs to keep it going for another three holes. It started on second, had a, had a dodgy second hole and then managed to hold a 35 footer across the green and it sort of set me up for the day with um, some of my putts. And I made birdie up nine as well and down 10, which was always good to make a birdie across 10. Uh, and then coming in, made birdie down 17 and it sort of just, it felt quite good today. So, but the putter was absolutely the savior of the day. Tell me, what are you like with pressure? What were the nerves like on that first tee? What, what pressure? Is, it, I, I, is there anyone around? I didn't notice. To be, to be perfectly honest, I was having a laugh with some of the guys we were playing with because um, they said on the first tee you, you looked like you didn't have any nerves at all. So if you see me putting the ball on the peg, you would have seen it. It struggled getting on. It was shaking so much. So it's, uh, I think it's, it's good to be nervous. It's the fear factor you don't want in your game. But yeah, very nervous. I think to now go out and win it would be great. I think it would be a disappointment if I didn't, seeing that I've, I've shot a good score to start with. So, so yeah, it, it would mean a lot. It's been a superb all-round performance by James today and no real sign of nerves at this first playoff hole either with a monster drive. Next up, Trilby Tour regular Michael McCormick gets his excuses in early. Uh, the course plan totally different from my practice round yesterday. The greens really speeded up today and caught me out a few times. Sometimes I was on par fives looking for birdies and ended up bogging them, which was a shock to the system, but I got through in the end. You know, this is my fourth Trilby tour and uh, still find it hard to get the club back and I'm sure my guys watching and the golf club will analyse my swing and point out a few things to me when I see them again. And how are your feelings going into the playoff? I'm feeling quite good about it because when I got here I'm playing against 105 guys, now it's just me and three other guys so I'm feeling good about it. Well we wish you all the best of luck. Thanks very much for that. Normally solid off the tee, but watching these playoffs for years on TV and then finally making one for real can do funny things to a man. Fortunately for Michael though, he just about gets away with it. Third man to the tee then, local hero and pressure sponge, Nick Haig. I'm a sales director, so uh, every day is pressure, so it's all right, it's fine. I like it. And have you, have you ever been in a playoff situation? Uh, no, not in golf, no. And what are your thoughts going into the playoff? Uh, playoff's going to be fine. But, uh, the fact I've got through is enough for me, so, uh, but I'm looking forward to it. It should be fine. It's all good for Nick, who qualified through the Old Thorns pre-qualifying event and is looking to go all the way. And last man to the tee, it's Tricky Dicky, shootout winner Richard Chisholm. I've got nothing to lose now. I uh, got lucky and now it's a free ride. Is it a case for you that you're in the top ten now and you can just relax and play? I hope so, yeah, <laughs> but I have an idea. And how was, uh, how was today's round for you? Uh, it was, apart from the putting, it was pretty good. I had a five or six free putts, so it could have been a lot better. Good stuff, and what about the holes, uh, the playoff holes? Did you play well on them? Uh, yeah, I've done all right. They're all shot holes for me, so hopefully we do all right. Well, we wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. Cheers. Richard Chisholm, the 27-year-old from Ashridge Manor Golf Club. Arsenal fan, and looking to make it four good tee shots from four, and he's done it, Matt. Yeah, stunning start to this playoff. High quality of golf. Great opening hole, this. Flag cut the front of the green, so it's going to make the approach shots interesting. Tough to get it close out the rough. Oh, we've got to come over that bank on the left-hand side. Ball. Got to make sure he flies it far enough. Oh! Set it. That's desperately unlucky. Another couple of yards there, and that would have been inside 20 feet. Gets a shot here, so no real damage done. Now Haig followed McCormick to a, a similar sort of place, and rather like Frilford last week. That flag is cut very close to the bunker. Yeah, great view of his second shot. Should be looking just right at the flag and just beyond it. That's exactly what he's done. That sets up a putt for a three net two. So throws the challenge down early to this man. 
slightly tough lie this hanging lie below his feet and a little bit downhill so you should expect to see the ball move to the right in the air Caddy screaming at it to bite it's on a good line oh that looks fantastic what a shot he had to fight against that all the way Chisholm and he's controlled it beautifully this is a wonderful opening hole now then James Lees, just like he did in regulation, has smashed his drive and caught the downslope. Yeah, he's got no more than 130 yards into this 440-yard par four, and he's loving it. It's all over the flag. Oh, yes. Well, what brilliant golf. We really have got a playoff on our hands. And uh, James Lees has had to be at his very best just to stay with the other three. McCormick then, from the back. Well, you heard him say it in his interview. He was on greens a lot today in regulation, but didn't quite come up with the goods. No, that's a good shot there. Slightly downhill. That spongy rough we've had this summer. Now, this for three net two. Oh, and it's a great attempt. That should be a cast iron four. Yeah, Nick Haig, the old Thorns member with a lot of fellow members supporting him in this playoff. A little bit hot out there still, Nick. It's been a scorcher of a day. Dear, and I'm afraid that Chisholm didn't scorch that one. That was nervy. Now, Lees, chance to stamp his authority all over this playoff. Putt for a three net two, and in it goes. Fantastic work there, and deserved it off the tee shot alone. Moves straight away to two under. James Lees, for the moment, the playoff leader. Now, big putt, doesn't want to give him too much daylight. Confidently taps it in for a four net three. He's going to relax in a minute. Well, let's hope so because he's a fantastic golfer, is McCormick. Now, Hague is supremely confident in his interview and just grabs enough of the right edge there. It's also a four net three. Stroke index two this hole. Definitely one of the tougher holes out here. These players handling the pressure beautifully. Now, after a nervy first putt. Confident second putt and also a four net three. So Chisholm, Haig, McCormick on one under, but James Lees heads to the second playoff hole at two under. And what a fantastic start to this winner takes all decider. Now, this is one of those views that you get at Old Thorns, just fantastic at 17. The players should be looking to start this in those bunkers on the left and then just let it feed back to the right. Use the dog leg, it really will shorten the hole. Beautiful rhythm again. And he really is eating up the pressure here. Well, that is two wonderful drives from El Supremo, James Lease, McCormick. Looking to follow that. Applause from the gallery tells you where this is heading straight down the middle. Now, there is a bail out to the left here, another fairway. I can promise you that's where I'd be aiming it. Local knowledge confirms that that is exactly the right choice. And Nick Hager's gone there. And he definitely moves the ball from right to left, so no surprise to see him out there. Not a tee shot he will enjoy. And Chisholm starting it in those bunkers. Is it going to feed back, or has he got the weaponry to get it over? Oh. oh no. no, Chisholm finds the sand, and William finds out another Trilby Torian. More action from the playoff coming up on Sky Sports right after the break. The perfect gentleman's playground. Welcome back. We're in the midst of a fantastic playoff for the Trilby Tour Championship of Hampshire here at Old Thorns Manor Hotel Golf and Country Estate. Richard Chisholm off 10 with a shot at the 17th. The second playoff hole took a big gamble from the sand. A gamble that didn't pay off. But with the pressure mounting, the Ashridge Manor player recovered brilliantly to stay in the game. His score of 38 points was the best by four in regulation and James Lees carried that form into the playoff to lead by one shot after the first hole. 
He didn't get all of his approach, but he got enough to keep him in with a shout of a birdie at the par 5 17. His chip needed to be perfection coming over the bunker that was protecting the pin and true to his form on the day, it wasn't far off. Mr Lees still looking like the man to beat. Old Thorns member, 40-year-old Nick Haig took a refreshing devil-may-care attitude into the playoff and some local bailout knowledge into hole two with his drive. His second shot though was pure gutsy class keeping him very much in business for the title. And 48-year-old West Middlesex player and Chelsea fan Michael McCormick was still hitting the target. But Michael, the lowest handicapper in the playoff, could only leave himself with an outside chance at 17. Let's get back to the action. Now McCormick with his eagle putt. I said earlier he hit it tee to green, great on the par fives, but really didn't take advantage of them. All about pace here, just get it down inside that three feet. Just pulled it to the left. There's a little pattern emerging for him today on the par fives. Not quite going as he wanted, but for Nick Haig, what oh, a fantastic course management. Just going about this in his own sweet way. And that is very sweet indeed. Good putt from Haig. That'll be for a four net three, and that will take him to three under. Now Chisholm, poor course management out of the bunker, but can salvage something. Again, just short on pace, unfortunately. You'd expect to see him tap that in for a five net four. This is the big one, though, Matt. Yeah, this is for birdie. This takes him to three under through two holes. And needs to do it. Needs to hang on to Hague to coattails. Get in. Oh, oh yes. Oh, wow. Well, this playoff just keeps getting better and better. Tremendous stuff from James Lees. He leads at three under, but he might have company. Now McCormick tidying up for a five. An unfortunate three putt from the back of the green. Moves to one under, or stays at one under, I should say. Yeah, second place for McCormick, but may get bumped down. Chisholm. Hasn't played his best, but those shots that he gets on the playoff holes have saved him. He moves to two under, the 10 handicapper, but this is the man that should have joint lead with Lees, and he does. Tremendous stuff then from Nick Haig, and <laughs> doesn't he know it? Third playoff hole is going to be the 18th hole, measures 419 yards, great par for this, slight dogleg from right to left. Now the key is to hit the fairway. Trouble left and right. It's been a driving display from this man all day long. And once again, that silky rhythm. And slightly in the left hand rough, but that's going to be fine there. Oh, oh, and he's waving. Oh my goodness me, confidence there from Lease. I wonder what Nick Haig thinks about that. The old Thorns member then, to do what he's done hundreds and hundreds of times before but that is what pressure does to you he's pushed it out to the right gone through the trees he's still got a shot but Haig with a bit of trouble and Chisholm's followed him yeah this is the one place you don't want to be and that is now stymied behind the trees and the bushes up the right hand side and he knows it Two back, one to play, must find the fairway. Got to somehow put some pressure on these other three players. And that's exactly what he's done. But is it too little too late? Well, that's fantastic golf from McCormick. But it's a bit of jungle warfare, I'm afraid, down there. And uh, Nick Hay, well, he's manufactured a dream of a shot. That is back in play. Chisholm has no view of the green. And what's he doing? No view and no shot now, that could be his playoff over. And Lees calmly and confidently standing there watching on. McCormick got to find something out of the top draw here. Just don't think he's got all of that, he's going to struggle to make it to the green. He needs a bounce, he doesn't quite get it. Well, what a shame for McCormick and like Chisholm, he really is out of the running. 
coming down the final playoff hole. Haig then. Let's push this right. This is heading into that tree. <laughs> oh, how oh, about that look? Well, normally, Matt, he comes off a slightly lower branch, but it's worked for him. That's outrageous. I'd be embarrassed. I would. I'd be embarrassed. That's kept him in it, though. And James Lees has got something to think about ahead of this shot, but surely this is his title. Oh, slightly above his feet, just going to move from right to left. Sets up perfectly oh. from this, and oh my word. He's into the water hazard, not fully in. I think he's still got a shot, but I'm sorry, James, you can't have it back. First time today he's lost his rhythm. I don't like the look of the shot, and I don't like the look of what's going on here. I think he's grounded his club in the hazard. And that's going to be a penalty. Well, it's a fantastic recovery, but you're quite right, Matt. It is a penalty. It's two shots. And from James Lee's point of view, it's over. Yeah, it's easily done. The ball's sitting up there in the grass, but what a disastrous time to do it. Now to Haig. Remember Old Thorns, two putts for it. What a fantastic day he's had. Mark with the door wide open for Nick Haig. He can just enjoy his time on the 18th green in front of the home crowd. His moment in the sun. To be crowned the champion of Hampshire. He's done it, he's done it. The first pre-qualifier ever to go on and win the main event. Sporting applause from James Lees, but he must be hurting and he must be thinking that should have been me, but it isn't. It's Nick Haig who produces a massive result to become the third Trilby Tour regional champion of 2012 claiming the Hampshire title and joining Nick Gammon and Paul Llewellyn on our champions roster for the season. And talking of the season, on we march. Three down and seven to go before our champions and qualifiers head to Stoke Park for the big one, the Trilby Tour World Championship final. Coverage through the whole season here on Sky Sports. Mondays 7pm is Trilby time. Today though, it's all about one man, Nick Haig. I wasn't expecting it. I played all right. I was hoping to be top 10, but getting into the playoffs was magic. And then obviously uh, winning the playoffs has been absolutely fantastic. Very happy. Tell me, what were your thoughts going through the playoff holes? I can't really say that on camera, but uh, I, I just thought, well, I've qualified in the top 10, so relax, play your game, take your clubs out and just have a go. And have a go is exactly what he did. Congratulations to Nick. It takes something a little bit special to win on the Trilby Tour and an approach like this one from Nick at the second playoff hole certainly fits the bill. Shot of the day belongs to our champion. And you know what's coming next. Short but very, very sweet this week. It's time for Rogue's Gallery. Oh. Here's William. That's got to be the best playoff golf we've had, I think. I mean, we had a minus three, we had another guy in minus three up coming to the last. Unfortunately, he took a penalty, grounded his club in the hazard, but just brilliant. I mean, so exciting. This is our second year here. The standard of everything has just leapt on. The acceptance of it, the knowledge of it, the staff being it, and just, you know, wrapping themselves around it. It's just been brilliant. I'm feeling quite emotional right now, to be quite honest with you. Next event, we're off to Caversham Heath. Uh, if we get anything like we had today with the play, the weather, uh, it's just going to be a brilliant day again. So, a new venue next week, Caversham Heath Golf Club near Reading for the Trilby Tour Championship of Berkshire. And don't go away just yet. After a late appeal was upheld, Trilby Torian Ed Bliss has been given the right to reply to his caddies Frank words earlier in the programme at the end of these credits. As always, for more information, go to www.williamhunttrilbytour.com.
As promised, there now follows a statement by Ed Bliss. Went a bit downhill immediately when I hit it into a tree. A few of them, actually. Had a go at my caddy, said that he was going to be helpful. Uh, he wasn't. Yeah, tears, sweat. There was a bit of blood. Caddy copped a bit. And um, ended up with 13. 13 points? That's correct. And whose fault is that today, do you think? My caddies. Okay. Yeah, definitely. William Hunt Savile Row sponsors the Trilby Tour. The perfect gentleman's playground.